365 with the Mac and Mac guys. I'm your host, Jody McDonald. He is the brain to the outfit, John McMullen, my partner here on Birds 365. Johnny Mac, know how you uh, put in the hours over the weekend, Friday into Saturday, uh, Thursday into Friday into Saturday. What did you do yesterday? I think I saw the sun a little bit for the first time in six months. I I was out back doing a little yard work, stuff like that. It was a nice day for once. The, the weather was nice, but was it a nice weekend? Because the Eagles, a uh, nice Sunday, because the Eagles had as good weekend as they did in the NFL draft. Yesterday was going around to check everybody's opinion. And like uh, knows is everybody's got one on the Eagles draft pouring out the grades, evaluating what they did as far as bringing in new talent, including some undrafted free agents, which I want to talk to you about today. Um, ranges vary from, I saw a couple of A minuses. I saw a couple of C pluses. So that's a pretty good uh, differentiation between draft grades overall. And then we'll certainly get more into the weeds as we go. Uh, how would you rate the overall player procurement grade you put on the Eagles for the last couple of days? Well, uh, after the draft, I gave it a B minus here on the uh, YouTube Jacob Media uh, Network. So uh, I'm sticking with that, a B minus. I, I didn't think, you know, it's a home run. Now, grades, we all know. I'd like to call them, you know, first reactions. It's, yeah, grades are kind of ridiculous, but everybody loves them. Everybody does them. So I threw out the B minus. I think they did some good things. There's some question marks. In a lot of ways, I look at that day too. This is going to tell the story of this draft as a whole because I think Landon Dickerson has a chance to be one of the best offensive linemen in this league if he's healthy right. um, long term. And that's a big if. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's had two torn ACLs, uh, two ankle surgeries, a tightrope ankle surgery, which – is the same surgery that shut Lane Johnson down last year. Um, you know, that's that's pretty significant. On the other hand, Joe, do you say, though, this is an offensive lineman. This isn't a wide receiver. So you just brace him up. And, you know, when he's been out there, uh, he's been just spectacular. I know there's comparisons to Ryan Jensen. Uh, we're going to have our, our buddy Damo on in a little bit. Um, I know he was talking to Brian Baldinger. He he compared him to the kid in Tampa Bay, I think, Ryan Jensen, um, who's just a big bully. Yeah, anybody who saw the Bucks run to the Super Bowl, that's the type of player he is. And then the small trade back to get Milton Williams, that's going to be controversial. You were bringing up uh, before the show because Aaron Robinson, where does he land? You know, not only do you need a corner, but he lands in the division with the New York Giants. And, you know, think about the first round, Jody. The, this Giants-Eagles thing, mm -hmm. Giants jump ahead. Uh, Eagles jump ahead of the Giants to get Devontae Smith. They jump a little bit back. The Giants get Aaron Robinson. So it might not look big today because they're not high-profile players. They're third-round picks. But if Aaron Robinson turns into something and Milton Williams doesn't, that's going to be that's gonna be a tough one to take for Eagles fans. You're right. Day two is the day that's going to generate the most conversation. We already had a chance to talk about Devonta Smith on Friday uh, here on the show after the big pick on Thursday night. You know, I'm ecstatic about it because I think he's got a chance to be a star wide receiver in the league. Uh, the Eagles went away from their general philosophy of got to be in the trenches, got to be in the trenches, because at that point in the draft, no one from the trenches deserved to be picked. So they did the right thing as far as I'm concerned, but got back to their philosophy over the course of the next two days by building in the trenches and went there immediately with uh, Dickinson. Uh, let me follow up with him on the injury front. Um, yes, he's had more surgeries than four, five, six guys, it seems like. His entire career, he's been rehabbing from some kind of injury, and when he does and gets back out on the field, he plays like a first-round draft pick level talent, it was a uh, kind of a boomer bust type pick for the Eagles, which I didn't know that was the way they were going to go specifically for me, because their season this upcoming year probably depends on the health of a couple offensive lining li linemen returning Brooks, 
returning Lane Johnson. If those guys are healthy, the Eagles are going to be a much better team than the 4-11-1 team that they <clears> threw out there last year. But they take another offensive lineman with physical questions. The Eagle overall, as an organization, have some questions about uh, injuries and having injured players and how they deal with injured players and get them back onto the field. Did you think there was any chance the Eagles were going there? We, uh, you, you and I have talked in the uh, however many shows we've done about the fact that y- you need to be uh, above board and forthcoming about the type of injuries that you're dealing with and the like. Hasn't always been an Eagle strong suit. Uh, was I was I got to tell you I was pretty much floored by the fact that that was their second round pick. Well, not the player I wasn't floored because he is that good. And think about the Eagles, a couple things. I mean, Jeff Stoutland is very close to Alabama. He was there at Alabama um, before he came to the Eagles. He was going to go back to Alabama this season uh, before the Eagles convinced him to stick around uh, in the transition from Doug Peterson to Nick Sirianni. So he's very close to that program. He's very close to Nick Saban, so he's got all the information you could possibly need about the kid. Uh, So that's number one. He also loves him as a player. Um, But the medical part of it is interesting because I got contacted by uh, somebody who used to be in the Eagles personnel department and said, you know, that's that's sort of a case-by-case basis. It really is. So if you think about – and he mentioned a couple of players, Jalen Smith, uh, Jay Ajahi, before he came here, when he was in the draft, DK Metcalf, most notably. He said those guys were treated like lepers for their medical issues. They right. were they were day three guys, maybe priority free agent guys, as far as the Eagles were concerned because of the uh, the injuries. Then you go back to Sidney Jones, uh, who tore his Achilles at his pro day. The thing that's strange to me about Sidney Jones is he's a corner. Um, and Achilles, you know, that to me, okay, if you're a four guy, four, four guy, and that turns you into a four or five guy, that's a concern. They didn't red flag him. Well, they wouldn't have taken him in the first round, but obviously they took him in the second round. Um, and here's the case with Dickerson again. A part of it is the position, the offensive line, and the fact that you can run a five to eight. Okay, you tore your ACLs, not that big of a deal. You know, Orlando Brown, we just talked about the big trade from uh, Baltimore to Kansas City. One of the reasons he fell in the draft, because he couldn't run. Who cares? Where's he running to? He turns into a great offensive lineman. Um, Now, there's, you know, is he going to be the same player as Jason Kelsey long term, who's maybe the best movement center of the generation? No, he's going to be Ryan Jensen. He's 50 pounds heavier, strong. But the, the beauty of this pick, you could have the best center in football. We always talk about in Green Bay, far to Rodgers. Well, this could be the center version of that, Kelsey to Dickerson, if everything works out. And and he can play either guard position as well. So yeah, he can I, play anywhere on the interior. Love his flexibility. But, again, we're dealing with injuries on the offensive line right now. Uh, you made a, uh, a well thought out speech about how well injuries on the offensive line you don't need to be a runner on the offense just get out there and block well Lane Johnson can't just get out there and block Brooks can't just get out there and block these guys are on the sideline not playing because of injuries and that's what scares me about Dickinson yeah all right he lost a tenth of a second off his 40 time but can he actually line up and play? Can he put the pads on on Sunday and get out and make plays slower than he might because he's dealing with an injury? No, certain injury just keep offensive linemen out of the game, and that scares me about that pick. Uh, the Eagles have been a team, as you pointed out correctly, to throw the quote-unquote red flag on them, which either drops them down their board or off their board. The amount of injuries that Dickinson had, uh, to me, I thought would push him down much further than the second round. Now, if he uh, misses two games in the next four years, they're going to look like geniuses. They got first-round talent in the second round. But if he misses 20 games in the next four years, uh, McDonald and McMullen are going to sit here and go, how did the Eagles not know that this guy was an injury waiting to happen? 
Well, yeah, and by talking about, you know, the injuries, I'm, I'm talking about the rehab of those injuries. In other words, maybe a torn ACL affects a skill position guy a little bit more than an offensive lineman. Obviously, if you tear your ACL, you can't play. If you tear your Achilles, you can't play. So I'm not trying to downplay the injuries. They're significant injuries. I'm just saying from the medical staff's perspective, they're going to take into uh, account the position. In other words, it's easier for an offensive lineman to come back from significant leg injuries than, say, a guy who, who does have to run 4-3 four, or 4-4. Four, four. That's a big part of his skill set or that makes him a successful player. But you're right. I mean, this is – this is yeah, uh, that's why I said this, this pick, even more than the Milton Williams pick, it will define this draft because I know you know you're getting a good receiver in Devontae Smith. And certainly when you compare him to what's here, uh, Eagles fans are going to say, wow, that's what a receiver looks like. <laughs> um, and and so you know that, but, I mean, you need more than that, especially when you're as talent deficient as the Eagles coming into the season. You need to get three or four contributors from this draft. If you get two Really good players, one, two, and you have the opportunity from a, a, a skill set trade standpoint, certainly. Well, then that's going to look like a, a really good draft in a couple of years. So I, I think so much of it hinges on, on, on Landon Dickerson. I really do. All right. Uh, let's move to that third round, second pick in day two, where the drama got ratcheted up even more with the Milton Williams selection. The Eagles traded back just a handful of spots to add an extra pick at the time I said, well, they must have a grouping of players on the board that are very close that they're willing to do this. This wasn't a move down a half a round, move down an entire round. This wasn't a massive drop down and just a small drop down to add an extra pick. Okay. This should work out well. And then they do that. They take Milton Williams to DT from Louisiana tech Okay, I checked his grades. Looked like that's about where he should have been drafted. They could use depth on the defensive uh, line. Okay, this pick makes a lot of sense. And then we get the video, which turned into a viral <laughs> video of the Eagles in their war room afterwards. Howie Roseman going around, fist bumping any, everybody. He gets to Tom Dono, who's been a front office exec for the Eagles for a while now. Was pretty big wig around the league before he came here to Philadelphia. And Tom Donahue looks like he wants to touch anyone on the face of the planet other than Howie Roseman. It was yeah. the most disingenuous fist bump I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. And he gave it one. Yeah. His, uh, okay. Uh, so it wasn't too hard to put two and two together and come up with four that he did not like the Eagles move to trade down that uh, there was a particular player on the board yeah. that he probably thought the Eagles just needed to take. Don't worry about adding another sixth round pick. The Eagles had a plenty of picks to begin with. Um, and he was not afraid to show that on camera. A couple of things off this for me. Then I need your take. Shame on Tom Donahue. you you got to know that. You're in that room. You've given yeah. the NFL permission to use your camera. You don't know whether you are or aren't on that camera. You have to believe that you are. And uh, I'm sure that there was enough conversation had before the Eagles made the move. Your point was taken. Your point was dismissed. They decided to make the move. You have to get on board. So number one, shame on him. Uh, I, I can't put it on Howie Roseman. I, again, we weren't in the room. Maybe you've got sources that have told you exactly how the lead up to that on camera moment that we got came down. But they made a decision. We'll find out over time whether it was the right or the wrong decision. Um, but they made a decision, and then everybody's got to get behind it. I, I, I know Tom Donahue has been around a long time. And he's got a lot of gravitas in the league, and he's worked in a bunch of war rooms. But you can't do that. You can't Specifically with this team that over the last six months has had as much said about their front office dysfunction, you can't put it on live display yeah. during the NFL draft. I agree. And, you know, Tom's a, gen a former general manager in this league, a two-time general manager. So uh, exactly what you said, he's got to know better. You know the cameras are in there. You certainly know the, the narrative around this organization right now and that there's uh, disarray. We don't know the, the chain of command. We don't know who's making the picks, 
who's chiming in? Are you sticking to the board? You know, one of the reasons you've seen some of the reporting, we had Jeff McLean on recently. Uh, one of the reasons personnel guys talk is because they're angry, you know, and, and, and uh, because they do that seven months of work. We also had Andrew Brand on, former executive with the Packers. And I, I thought Andrew had a crystal ball. If you go back to that, Jody, he was taught this is pre-draft. And he's talking about going off your board and how it takes the air out of the room. Yep. If you do that, the air got taken out of Tom Donahoe. The air, you saw the air get taken out of him in that moment. So the question to me is, this is the only question, Jody. Was it about the player? And he liked Aaron Robinson better than Milton Williams. If, if it's about that, it's not that big of a deal. That happens all the time. But um, I go back to your first point. He's got to know that as a professional. He's got to hold that angst in uh, until he's away from the cameras. B, if it's about the board and they went away from their board, then it's a problem because that's been too, I won't say consistent, but it's happened too much over the past couple of years. Right. And uh, again, I don't think uh, today, tomorrow, next week, the month after, the year after, we'll know exactly what the board said at that moment. I, I just don't know if you'll get anybody. Dono was pretty upset, so he might yeah. at some point tell somebody something. But my guess is that they yeah. were all pretty closely graded. Donna, let's uh, we'll we'll make a for instance here, and if I'm off base here, please call me on the carpet for. Let's say uh, Robinson was a six four, that that was their grade on Robinson, and uh, the next guy was a six four point five, and the next was a well, they were all probably pretty close. And the Eagles uh, on their board saw well, yes, we acknowledge that we're dropping down, and we may be taking a lesser player, but it's not that much of a lesser player. So if we can add draft capital and get a sixth round pick, it's worth it. We're not dropping from a seven to a six. We're dropping from a 6.5 to a 6.5.5. And Howie Roseman made that judgment call. I doubt it was about the board. I think it was probably about how much is an extra sixth round pick worth as to how far we're coming down our evaluation on the player. Howie's got to make that call. <clears throat> Sorry, Tom. You used yeah, to be a general manager. Charge. It's how he's called. How he's got to make that call, right? I yeah, I agree. And if it, you know, you very well may be right. I would also throw in positional value as well. We just talked about, and by the way, in day three, how he said people are getting tired of we're taking linemen. Well, that's how we won a championship. I've been talking about this for a month. And he said flat out, that's how we're gonna win another one. So Devontae Smith wasn't a change in the DNA. I always talk about they hit pause to get Devontae Smith, yep. and then they took it off pause and went be right back to draft and lineman. So my take on it is probably they were very close. Uh, Blake Bedenfield was on. We had a, a former scouting director. He talked about the vertical and the horizontal boards. So you do the positions. You have uh, each type. And it came down to me probably, they probably looked at Aaron Robinson as a slot corner and said we'd rather have the defensive lineman who could be uh, something of an impact down the line. That would be my guess. And uh, it did lead to some drama, but I think it led to the Eagles getting a decent player at a position of need. Defensive tackle is a position of need. All right, he is uh, John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. Mac and Mac on Birds 365. We're going to bring a third opinion into the mix. Joining us next is venerable Eagles beat reporter. He's been doing it for a while now. And Hall of Fame voter here in Philadelphia, Paul Domowitz, going to join us on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.